Okay, so in this video I'm going to outline some of the basic and important properties of the derivative. So just to remind you what's the definition of a derivative, if you've got a function f of x, then we define the derivative d by dx of f of x, okay, which um, is also written f prime of x. This is defined as the limit delta x goes to 0 f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. Okay, so this is the definition I introduced in the first video and as we've seen what this equation here does is measure the slope of the graph of f at the point x. Okay, so I want to show you some properties of this which are good to remember. So the first one is very simple, almost trivial, what happens if f is a constant? Okay, so suppose that I've got a function f which is just a constant function. In other words, f of x is equal to c, some constant c for all x. So the graph of the function here looks like this. It's point c. Okay, well, in this case, it's very easy. Then f prime of x is the limit delta x goes to 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x delta x. But of course, both of these things are equal to c. So this just becomes the limit delta x goes to 0 of c minus c over delta x. But c minus c is 0. So therefore, this is just 0. In other words, the derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, and this is easy to understand because if you look at the graph, you see that this graph does indeed have 0 gradient, okay, which is what the derivative represents. Okay, so that's the result for a constant function. Next, I want to see what happens if you multiply f by a constant. Okay, so what I mean is instead of differentiating the function f of x, I differentiate the function a times f of x, where a is some other constant. Okay, so what do we find then? So d by dx of a of times f of x, sorry. So from the definition again, this is the limit delta x goes to 0 of a times f at x plus delta x minus a times f of x divided by delta x. And you see that the a is just a constant which multiplies both things here, so I can take that outside. So this is a times the limit delta x goes to 0, f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And what you're left with here is just the derivative of f. So the result is that the derivative of a constant times a function is the same constant times the derivative of that function. So in other words, you can just take the constant outside of the derivative here. Okay. So the final thing for this first section I want to look at is what happens if you add two functions together and then differentiate. Okay, so here I want to consider what's the derivative of a function f of x added to another function g of x. So if I try to differentiate the whole thing. Okay, so again it just follows straight from the definition d by dx f of x plus g of x. This is defined as the limit of f this plus g this. So that's the value of the combined function at x plus delta x. And then you've got minus the value at x. You divide it by delta x. And you see that by regrouping terms, I can write this as the limit delta x goes to 0 of two things. 
first of all, f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. Okay. So that's taken this term and this term, and what I'm left with is the g terms. So this is g of x plus delta x minus g of x divided by delta x. Okay, so the first term is simply the derivative of f, and the second term is simply the derivative of g. So this turns out to be df by dx plus dg by dx. Okay. Or if I like, you can write this as f prime of x plus g prime of x. So what this shows, again, it's very simple. What it shows is that the derivative of a sum is the same as the sum of the derivatives. Okay, so you can either add together first and then differentiate, or differentiate first and add together, you get the same answers. Okay. So these properties are very basic, and you may think they're too obvious to, to mention, but they tell you something very important about the derivative d by dx. And what they tell you is that the derivative operator d by dx is a linear operator. Okay, so this concept of linear operator is very important in mathematics. Okay, and we'll see it in other cases throughout this course several times. Okay, so I want to bring it up now. What does it mean to say that d by dx is a linear operator? Okay. So operator first is quite simple. An operator is something which takes functions and gives you another function. Okay. So this is something which maps functions to functions. Okay. For example, if I take d by dx of the function x squared, then I get the function 2x. So it takes me from one function to another function. That's what an operator means. Okay. Now, linear is exactly these two conditions we've just proved. A linear operator means that if I differentiate a constant times the function, then that's the same as differentiating the function first and then multiplying by the constant. And if I differentiate the sum of two functions, then that's the same as differentiating the functions and then taking the sum. So these two conditions define what it means for an operator to be linear. And uh, as we will see later on in the course, if you've got a linear operator, if you've got an operator which you know is linear, then it there are some very powerful theorems you can apply um, to deal with it. Okay, I, I can't really say more about that now, but I just want to highlight the, the fact that these two properties means that this derivative is a linear operator, and later on in the course we'll see why this idea is so powerful. Okay, so finally, I just to maybe make this idea a little bit clearer, let me give you an example of something which is not a linear operator. Suppose I define some operator, I'll just call it O for now, and this operator is very simple. What it does is it takes a function f of x and it gives me the function f of x plus 1. In other words, it just shifts the value of f by 1 everywhere. So this is an operator. It takes a function and it gives me another function. Right? So that definitely defines an operator. Is it linear? Okay. So is it linear? We need to check the following. We need to check is the operator applied to a of f of x the same as a times the operator applied to f of x. Okay, so unfortunately I've, I'm running out of space, so let me just check that down here. So on the first, on the left hand side, the operator takes this function and just adds 1 to it. So therefore, We've got that, okay, sorry, you've got that 
the operator applied to a f of x is just equal to a times f of x plus 1. Right? It takes the function and adds 1 to it. On the right hand side, we've got a times the operator of f of x. So this is a times f of x plus 1. Okay? Which is equal to a of f of x plus a. Okay? And you see that these two things in general are not equal unless by chance you've chosen the constant a equals 1. Right? So in general these two things are not equal, not equal. So therefore this equation is false and therefore the operator is not linear. Okay, so that's an example of an operator which is not a linear operator. But as we've proved, proved here, the derivative is a linear operator. It does satisfy these two conditions. Okay, I'll just note that if you combine two of these results we've proved, first that the derivative of a constant is zero, and secondly that um, the derivative is a linear operator, you get quite a nice result which is that if I differentiate a function plus a constant then by the linear property this is the same as differentiating f and then differentiating the constant c but we've shown that the derivative of a constant is zero so therefore this is the same as df by dx so in other words differentiating the function plus a constant the constant doesn't matter. Okay, it just disappears here. So if you take a function and add a constant onto that function, it will have the same derivative. Okay. Okay, so the final thing I want to do in this presentation is prove two of the results that I stated in the introductory lecture, and these are the product and chain rules. So first of all, I'm going to prove the product rule too. So these are two rules which help you um, differentiating various different compositions of function. The first one, the product rule, tells you how to differentiate the product. In other words, the multiplication of two functions. So if I have a function f and I multiply it by a function g and then I differentiate it, what does that give me? So again, this follows straight from the definition. I can write it out here. Well, that's just the definition of the derivative. But there is a trick here. You can group these terms together to look like the derivatives of f and g. In particular, you write it in this way f of x plus dot x minus f of x times g of x plus x. Okay, so that's taken care of the first term here, but I haven't got the second term, and also I've got this term here which I don't want. So f of x times g of x plus delta x I don't want, so therefore I can take it away. So I can write this as plus f of x times g of x plus delta x. Okay, so that has removed this term here. And then I've got to also include this original term here, which is that. Okay, so I just added and subtracted this additional term here. And the reason why this is useful is you see that on the first term, it looks like you've got the derivative of f. And on the second term, it looks like you've got the derivative of g. So in conclusion then, this first term is the derivative of f times g. And this second term is f times the derivative of g. Okay. So this is the conclusion, and this is the product rule as stated in the original lecture.
So you can differentiate the product of two functions like this. So that's the product rule. Finally, I need to prove the chain rule to you. So the chain rule tells you how to differentiate if you compose two functions. So this means you consider the function f at the point g of x, where g is some other function. So it's take, you take x, you apply g to it, and then you apply f to it. And this function is called f of g of x. Okay. So we want to compute the derivative of this function. Again, it follows from the definition. So that's the definition. Now, if I set a small thing, delta u, I'll call it, which is equal to g of x plus delta x minus g of x. So this difference between these two values of the function g, I'll call delta u. And then you see that you can write this as the limit delta x goes to 0 of f. So from here, g of x plus delta x is just g of x plus delta u. And then here we've got minus f of g of x divided by delta x. OK, now that's looking hopeful because what you've got on top here looks a bit like a derivative of f, except that Instead of having delta x on the top, you've got delta u on the top. So you can get around that by writing this as limit delta x goes to 0 of f of g of x plus delta u minus f of g of x. And if I put delta u on the bottom here, then I do just have the derivative of f of g of x here, right? But in reality, I've got delta x on the bottom, so therefore I have to multiply this by delta u divided by delta x. Okay, so hopefully that step's okay. And then finally, I just need a little bit more space to complete the calculation. Finally, if I substitute what is delta u into the equation here, I can write this as the limit delta x goes to 0 of f of g of x plus delta u minus f of g of x divided by delta u times delta u, which is just g of x plus delta x minus g of x divided by delta x. Okay, so this first term is just the derivative of f at the point g of x. This second term is just the derivative of g. So therefore, this is equal to f prime at the point g of x times g prime at the point x. OK, so that is the chain rule as stated in the original video. Okay, And that's the proof. Right, so I've proved various different properties of the derivative in this video. First of all, I proved it was linear, a linear operator, and I explained what that means. And then here I proved the product rule and chain rules, which you can use to calculate the derivatives of many different functions.